Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I got something real special lined up for you. Because today, I will be talking about my favorite Christmas movie. In fact, I would go so far as to say that it is probably one of the greatest Christmas movies ever made. I'm talking about the one, the only, and the legendary White Christmas. Now, there's a good chance some of you may not have heard about this film. Well, I'm here to fix that, because when I'm through, you're going to want to watch it. But first, let me give you a little overview. The story starts off at the end of World War II, where we meet our two main characters, Bob Wallace and Phil Davis. It's at this point we learn that Bob was already a famous singer, and, well, he was entertaining the troops for Christmas because, hey, you know, when you're at the battlefront, you could use all the reminders of home you can get. And Phil Davis was helping him out. And while he was entertaining the troops, the enemy attacks. A wall nearly falls on Bob, and Phil saves him. And, well, Bob says that if there's anything he can do for him, just name it. And Phil suggests that they team up as a singing and dancing duo once the war is over. And they become a great big success. They're doing all kinds of plays, musical numbers, all kinds of things. You name it, they're there. They are the toast of the town. But, of course, with fame, there comes a little... Uh, sacrifice and that sacrifice is that bob has let his work consume him so much so that he's not taking any time for himself or to even get himself a girlfriend and that's starting to worry phil along the way bob and phil run into the haynes sisters betty and judy who have their own little act as well and we learn that phil's been trying to get bob hooked up with a girl for quite a while now and judy's been trying to get betty hooked up with a man for a while as well but no success or so it seems. Hello. Oh, yeah. Deep blue. Of course, Phil, being the good friend that he is, trying to hook up his best friend with the beautiful Betty Haynes, he does everything he can, including conning him into going to Vermont, where, what a coincidence, Betty and Judy are going to perform. And when they get there, they're surprised to learn that the inn that Betty and Judy are going to perform at is owned by the general Bob and Phil served under during the war. And they learn very quickly that, unfortunately, he's going through some serious financial trouble because the place is not really getting too many customers. And so Bob, Phil, and the Haynes sisters decide to try to help the general. The rest of it involves an incredible tale involving music, dance, and, well, a cliche misunderstanding, but a very beautiful ending on top of it. It's a story about love and friendship wrapped up into a neat little package. And it's one that has stood the test of time. In fact, even now, it is still rated as one of the greatest Christmas movies ever made. Because when Paramount made this film, they really pulled out all the stops. And as always, it starts with the cast. Bob Wallace is played by the legendary Bing Crosby who we all know best as a singer, but he also did quite a few great films, such as Holiday Inn, The Bells of St. Mary's, Robin and the Seven Hoods, Road to Morocco, and of course, we all remember how he narrated the Sleepy Hollow story from Disney's Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. But of course, he is best remembered by everyone as basically the singer of Christmas music. He sang so many incredible songs. Everybody knows them. From It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas to the legendary White Christmas, which he made famous in the movie Holiday Inn. Of course, Bing Crosby proved to be a great fit for Bob Wallace because he comes off as this, well, basically this Rodgers and Hammerstein character who is a real workaholic. And he also proves that even though he does have that workaholic nature, he has a heart of gold because of what he does for the general. There's a scene close to the end which leads to uh, the misunderstanding between him and Betty about as to what he's trying to do for the general. Now, at first, they're all trying to help him, but then he sees that the general, he's kind of hurt by, well, to make a long story short, he tried to get back into the army and he got turned down. And so, well, that's a pretty big kick in the teeth for a major general because, you know, this is the guy who led men through war, so it's tough. So he does more for the general by trying to throw, well, basically a big reunion for him. Once again, it shows he's got a real heart of gold. 
Bill Davis is played by Danny Kaye, who I think many people would know for all his movies, such as A Song is Born. Hans Christian Andersen is probably one of his most famous. The Kid from Brooklyn. And, of course, here comes Peter Cottontail. Now, his character, he comes off as, well, a guy who's part of the group. He works real well with Bob. But at the same time, he's got a bit of a sneaky side about him to try to get things done. Because there's plenty of times in the picture where, well, Bob didn't want to do something exactly, but Phil just keeps reminding him how he saved his life by pointing at his arm that he hurt when he got him out of the way of that wall. He just keeps holding that over his head. You know? Oh, and for the record, that is how he convinces Bob to go to Vermont because he points at that arm again. <laughs> so, but at the same time, he proves to be a pretty good guy himself. He's pretty much the comedy to relief character in this because of his sneaky nature. Betty Haynes, who is played by famous singer and actress Rosemary Clooney, she's more noted as a singer, I think, that end being a breathtaking beauty. And George Clooney's aunt, believe it or not. But she also did a few more movies, such as Red Garters, The Stars Are Singing, and Deep in My Heart. Now, Betty, she's a good character. And, well, she's just like Bob Wallace. Constantly working, never trying to find a man. She shows that she's got a good tender side. And at the same time, well, she does show that she could be a little foolish herself because of the big misunderstanding that I mentioned earlier. And now we come to Judy Haynes, who's played by famous actress Vera Ellen. She would probably be best known for this picture alone, but she did quite a few other films, such as On the Town, The Kid from Brooklyn, and Call Me Madam. Now, Judy, she's a very good character as well. In fact, she's just like Phil. She's trying to get her sister married off because, well, she wants to see her happy. That's what it comes down to. And I love the way she's teaming up with Phil to try to get them hooked up, but at the same time, she's also kind of angling to get herself hooked up with Phil. But of course, I must talk about two other very important characters, and that would be General Waverly, who is played by well-known actor Dean Jagger. Now, you may not know the name, but you probably have seen the face, because he did quite a few pictures, such as the legendary 12 O'Clock High, Western Union, and X the Unknown. Now, the general, he well, basically comes off as what you might expect as a general who, you know, led men and, well, he kind of got down on his luck. But at the same time, he also shows that he's a pretty sensible guy because when Betty is leaving because of the misunderstanding, well, he does try to intervene by saying this. I can't help feeling this is a tactical error. I kept watching you and Bob last night. I say what you two need is... Good talking to him. Those are pretty wise words coming from a general, that's for sure, because he was right about that. She was making a tactical error. And I cannot help but even shed a tear every time I see the general's face when he walks into that hall and sees a reunion waiting for him. And now we come to our final cast member, and that would be the general's housekeeper, Emma Allen, who is played by Mary Wicks who you might actually recognize because she's actually been in quite a few pictures. Usually, she's always playing a busybody or a nun. And yes, in this picture, Emma is a busybody. In fact, she's the one who causes the misunderstanding between Bob and Betty because she overhears Bob on the phone talking to an old friend of theirs who has a TV show to try to reach out to the men of the general's unit to gather them up for that reunion. But of course, Emma only hears part of the conversation where the TV host wants to try to turn it into a sob story. But what she didn't hear was that Bob said, no, that is not what we're going to go for. We're just going to pitch the idea to try to get everybody to come here. And unfortunately, she tells Betty what she heard, not knowing the whole story. But of course, the cast was only a big chunk of it. The rest of it was all about the music, the dance, and especially the costume. And without a doubt, for this movie, it would have been nothing without the music. And it goes without saying that the composer truly brought it all together. Because that composer was the legendary Irving Berlin. He wrote all the songs to this movie. And I really do mean all of them. That's how good he was. 
The name probably does sound familiar to a lot of people because this man had written over 1,200 songs. Most of them ha are legendary even now. He is famous for making such great songs like Putting on the Ritz, There's No Business Like Show Business, and of course the legendary song White Christmas, which was introduced in the movie Holiday Inn, which he wrote all the music to that too, by the way. And of course, I think anyone who loves America would definitely remember his most patriotic song of all, God Bless America. To say that Irving Berlin was the greatest composer of all time is actually putting it mildly. It's no lie. In fact, famous composer Jerome Kern said it best. He said, Irving Berlin has no place in American music. He is American music. Even then, he was a legend. And if you pay close attention to the title, it is not just called White Christmas. It is actually called Irving Berlin's White Christmas. And that's saying a lot. But of course, it's not just the music that makes this movie so grand. It is also the choreography. For instance, the wedding chime bring happy time for Mandy and me. I think I could speak for just about everybody when I say that is some very good choreography. And the genius behind the choreography was Robert Alton. He's a legendary figure in the world of theater and movies because he organized tons of choreography for both Broadway and Hollywood. And believe it or not, he is actually accredited with discovering legendary singer, dancer, and actor Gene Kelly. He's also well noted for creating the choreography for legendary dancers such as Fred Astaire, Judy Garland, Marilyn Monroe, and Sid Charisse. But of course, a movie is only as good as its director, and this one had a really good director. His name was Michael Curtiz. Now, the name probably doesn't mean anything now, but back then he was pretty well known. In fact, he's been described as a very productive director, because in the 1920s, he did about 50 films in Europe. Then when he moved to America, he did 100 more. And his career just kept going ever since. And he actually has made some of the most legendary films of the 1930s and 40s. And some of his movies include The Adventures of Robin Hood, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and the legendary Casablanca. And considering how this movie came out, they clearly picked the right man for the job. And here's an interesting little fact for you. This movie also helped uh, launch another actor's career. His name was George Shakiris. If the name sounds familiar, you would know him best as Bernardo from the legendary film West Side Story. Uh, that would be the original, not the remake. Now, he's not credited in this movie, unfortunately, because he was just a dancer in this. In fact, he did most of the dances with Vera Allen in quite a few of her musical numbers in this picture. Now, he wasn't the main dancer that you see her dancing with. He was one of the dancers in the background. But... He also did a musical number with Rosemary Clooney. It is this particular moment. That's what seemed to have launched his career because that still photograph of him with Rosemary Clooney, somehow that caught Paramount's attention and they wanted him to do more movies with him. And his career just launched right after that. But of course, one thing a lot of people would probably remember about this movie is all the incredible costumes that the cast wore during the entire picture. Every one of these costumes was made by legendary costume designer, Edith Head. And believe me when I tell you this, Edith Head is a legend among costume designers everywhere. She worked for well over 43 years with Paramount and worked with Universal till the day she died, making costumes for some of the greatest stars of all time. In fact, she was so popular because she was able to develop a personal connection with each one of the actors and actresses while she was designing the costumes for the pictures, that even when she was working with Paramount, 
they had to loan her out by a star's request. Yeah, that's how popular she really was. And just recently, the costumes from this movie actually came to my town. I had the pleasure of seeing it, and it is absolutely breathtaking to actually see these costumes firsthand. I actually made a little short video for you to highlight all the costumes, and I'll put the link below so you can find it. If this exhibit ever comes to your town, I highly suggest you go see it. It's quite an experience. Like I said, Paramount really pulled out all the stops when they made this movie to have such a legendary cast, as well as a legendary composer, a fantastic director, and a legendary choreographer, as well as a legendary costume designer in mind. When you get all of that and put it together, you really get probably one of the greatest Christmas movies ever made. It's always been a personal favorite for me. I always make the time for it every holiday season. But if you haven't seen it, you really should. It is breathtaking. It is incredible. The choreography is fantastic. The music is absolutely beautiful. Every song has a purpose. And every dance step has emotion and feeling behind it. And the way the cast interact with each other, it's absolutely incredible. So once again, if you have not seen this, you really should look it up. I highly recommend this. Before I go, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And in the words of the song... <laughs>